So in the last video, I walked through the data model changes that I'm planning to make for SOFA. And in this video, I thought it'd be interesting to walk through the process that I follow whenever I have to do data model changes and updates. But before I do that, I have a little channel update that I wanted to share. I'm changing this channel name from SOFA to my name. So while SOFA is my main focus and the thing I spend the most time on, there's a ton of stuff that I would like to talk about and, and share that are outside of SOFA specifically. This is stuff around my general process for uh, making apps, for design development, uh, the various tools that I use. There might be some random just general tech stuff as well. Not like a like a tech reviewer type stuff, but just, you know, thoughts on maybe industry things, that kind of thing. And there's going to be tons of SOFA updates that I'm going to be sharing here because really SOFA is the kind of the main vehicle that I'm going to be sharing a lot of that stuff through when it comes to process, tooling, and anything else that's kind of surrounding those things. But changing the channel to my name gives me more freedom to do those things. I don't have to just talk about SOFA. I can mostly talk about it and then talk about some other things as well. That's it for the channel updates. So now let's jump into my data model updating process. So like we talked about last time, um, this is all the data model updates that I'm planning. So I go through this and I kind of write out a bunch of notes and how I'm thinking about doing this. And this is really the kind of messy space that I, I work in to do that stuff. Once I know what I'm going to be doing, I start to put together a simple checklist. And that's what we're looking at here. And this is really easy. It's really just, hey, here's some existing updates I'm going to be doing. And I just list that out. So for the various entities that I have, what are the actual changes that I'm going to be making? Um, and I do link to the various uh, notes that I was that I was writing throughout that process, just so I can quickly jump to that stuff. And I'll link to, um, you know, there's there's some things that I was still working through. So I'll link to uh, articles or documentation that I, that I come across for solving certain issues. And then here's some new entities that I'm going to be adding. And then this is stuff that I thought I was going to need, but ended up not needing. So I, I am still keeping it here. I'm just kind of crossing it out just as a reference, just in case I need to go back and look at anything. So as you can see, there's nothing fancy here. It's literally just a checklist. Uh, and as I go through and actually do these changes, I will go through and check these things off. Because again, when I'm making, sometimes I'm making small updates where, you know, maybe one or two properties on something. But this is a, a slightly bigger one with uh, a lot of different steps. So I don't want to forget anything uh, before I do this. So having a simple checklist is really nice. Now I have that checklist, but updating the data model for Core Data and um, iCloud it's a very specific process that you have to go through. And I do it so infrequently, I maybe do it twice a year or something like that, that it's, again, it's very hard to remember every single step all the time. So I actually have my own documentation for how to do this. And I essentially just go through and I, I reference this document. And as you can see, it goes through a bunch of different things on, you know, this is, this is essentially a checklist, but it's really a document that I reference and go through. Um, because I have to change the environment from production to development before I start actually making those changes to make sure I create a new version of the data model and then actually make the updates um, and activate that new version as well. And then with uh, iCloud, because I use NS Persistent Cloud Kit Container for the syncing, you have to initialize the schema a specific way. Um, then you kind of have to turn that off as well. And then once all that stuff is is kind of there and done, then it you know it needs to be deployed to production. So again, there's nothing fancy here. It's really just uh, documentation for myself so that I don't forget anything because when there's a lot of different steps involved, it's very, very easy to forget stuff. So that's it. Nothing fancy, just a little update. I'm hoping to get this stuff out before WWDC, which is in less than a month. So I definitely have to hustle a little bit to do that because I'd, I'd like to get this off of my plate so I can focus on WWDC coming up. But as you can see, uh, I like to plan pretty heavily for, for changes like this um, and really think it through. So I will take 
you know, I'll work on something for a couple of days and then I'll, I'll step away for, for a couple of days to give myself some distance from it. And then I'll come back to it to make sure that things still make sense. Um, and I'll even talk with, with, uh, you know, various friends about it to make sure that, that things are making sense and, and maybe there's ways I can do something a little bit better or simpler. So like I said, there's nothing fancy here, just simple checklists and documentation. That's really all it takes. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.